Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Donald Trump. The Republican frontrunner has made a name for himself in the last month by trafficking in prejudice and paranoia. His latest insult is his call to stop all Muslims from entering the United States. This is both a shameless and a dangerous idea. At a time when America should be doing everything we can to lead the fight, defeat ISIS and other radical jihadists, Donald Trump is playing right into their hands. Well, it comes from a very intelligent source, and that's Hillary Clinton, as you well know, not known for demagoguery, thievery, and cowardice, nor stabbing America in the back. So what would you expect from her? Today we're going to talk about immigration and inbreeding. That's right. You've all heard about immigration ad nausea. Ad nauseum. I get it. I've been covering it since 1994. And when I started in radio in 1994, my first show was about immigrants and epidemics. Many people called me the same names that they're calling Donald Trump today, including those in talk radio who have since embraced themselves as anti-immigration specialists. But that's irrelevant. What's relevant is we're talking about immigration. How many we need? Do we need any? What kind do we need? Should we uh, have some kind of litmus test for immigrants? These are important questions. Now, I, in my book, Government Zero, called for no immigration for seven years, period. A blanket ban. All immigrants, seven years. I don't care where they're from. We don't need immigrants. The country is sinking. We have a very high unemployment rate. We do not need any more immigrants in the workforce. What we need to do is train the unemployed to work in the workforce. That's number one. And number two, and it's a very delicate subject, and I'm warming up to it very slowly because it's something new to talk radio. We're going to talk about Muslim inbreeding, especially in the third world. It's a very important topic. We're also going to talk about Islamic terrorism and why it doesn't exist in Japan. Now, the reason Islamic terrorism doesn't exist in Japan is very simple. Do you know why? Why is it one of the most developed nations on earth has almost no te terrorism? It's a democratic society. Is Japan a racist society, Hillary? Is Japan a racist society, Hillary? They're not affected by ISIS. There was not a single terrorist attack perpetrated by Muslims in Japan. There was not a single minor riot, disturbance, or protest about cartoons about the Prophet Muhammad in Japan. How did that happen? How come Japan has no terrorism? Think about it. They have one of the most advanced societies on earth. They have one of the most advanced technological societies on earth. And um, it seems they don't have too many mosques. They don't have any mosques. They don't have any too many Islamic schools. They haven't banned pork in public places. They haven't banned churches in Japan. They haven't introduced separate hours for boys and girls in swimming pools in Japan. In Japan, Japanese male doctors are actually allowed to touch their female patients. How is that possible? Did you know that in Japan, Muslim women do not get immense social aid each time they bear a child? Did you know that there are no Sharia courts in Japan? Did you know the Quran is not considered a holy book in Japan? So the reason Japan has no problems with terror is that Japan is fundamentally closed to Muslims. Now, officially, Japan is not closed to Muslims. However, the number of immigration permits, Hillary, given to the applicants from Islamic countries is near zero. If you want to get a working visa and you're a Muslim, even if you are a doctor or an engineer or a manager sent by foreign companies that are working in Japan... Well, maybe you'll get a permit, but it's very hard. There are very few Muslims in Japan. Very, very few. 
One of the leaders of the Muslim community in Japan, Nur ad-Din Mori, was asked, what percentage of Japan's total population are Muslims? He said, well, the answer at the moment is one out of 100,000. The person who did this article, Y.K. Cherson, Cherson for Prison Planet, said that Japan's population is 130 million people. So if these Muslim leaders are correct, he writes, then they must be around 1,300 Muslims. 1,300 Muslims. But even those Muslims who obtained immigration permits and lived for many years in Japan have a very, very low chance of becoming Japanese citizens. Did you know that Japan officially forbids exhorting people to adopt the religion of Islam? Did you know that any Muslim who actively encourages conversion to Islam is seen as proselytizing to a foreign and undesirable culture? Did you know that any promoter, uh, active promoter of Islam faces deportation, even a jail sentence in Japan? Did you know that, unlike in New York City, Bill de Blasio, the Arabic language is very rarely taught in, a, in academic uh, uh, institutes in Japan? I guess the Japanese are now going to be on the no-fly list. I guess all Japanese will now be banned from entering England. Did you know that importing the Quran in Arabic is practically impossible? And the only Quran permitted is the adapted version in Japanese, where there is no calling for killing and head cutting. Exactly what I told you needs to be done in this country. How do you bring in a book that says kill the infidel? How do you let it how does a nation permit that? A book that teaches sub morons to kill the infidel, and you wonder why some of the sub morons who have interbred kill the infidel and cut off heads and blow up children's centers. Where are they getting this insanity from? In Japan, only two mosques in Japan. Tokyo, Jama Mashid, and Kobe Mosque. The total number of Muslim praying sites in Japan, 30 single-story mosques. 100 apartment rooms set aside for prayers. Japanese society expects Muslims to pray at home. No laying down in the street, taking over public squares. Take over the public squares to pray to Allah. Can't happen in Japan. If they try it in Japan, they're, high, they're highly fined. They can deport them. Take a look at what's going on in London. They just had a couple of hundred thousand fanatical liber laborites like Hillary Clinton and Muslims wanting Donald Trump banned from England. England's finished. Did you know that Japanese companies seeking foreign workers specifically say they do not want Muslims? Did you know there's not even a trace of Sharia law in Japan? Did you know halal food is almost impossible to find in Japan? You want me to go on? I can go on. Well, you can go on. You can read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Why there is almost no Islamic terrorism in Japan. The reason is, is there's no Islamic immigration into Japan. That's number one. There's no catering to Muslims. That's number two. That's why Japan will survive, number three. Now, here's a very sensitive topic that goes way beyond immigration, and it's going to set off a lot of nervousness amongst the listeners of this show, and it's about inbreeding. And let me start from the top on inbreeding. When I was very young and I went to get a marriage license, I had to take a blood test. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a racist society that f forced you to have a blood test? In New York State, you know why I had to have a blood test? It was called the Wasserman test. It was to make sure that neither of the parties had syphilis. Ha, huh, that's a joke. Why, in San Francisco, that's probably considered a, a healthy thing. Oh, yeah, probably a prerequisite for marriage in certain communities in San Francisco. But let's not get too sarcastic. There were blood tests. You were not allowed to marry somebody who was your first cousin. Now, why is it that America, when I was a kid, or young, rather, didn't permit first cousins to marry. Can you imagine anything as crazy as that? You can't marry a first cousin? Why would a society prohibit first cousins from marrying? Can you anyone figure that out? Of course you can. Why would New York State prohibit first cousin marriage when I was young? It doesn't anymore, I don't think. Actually, cousin marriage is legal in New York. I just have the list here. Various states have different laws regarding marriages between first cousins. 25 states prohibit marriages between first cousins. Six states allow first cousin marriage under certain very restricted circumstances. 
Now, why is that? Why would a state prohibit first cousin marriage? Because anyone who took elementary biology, I'm talking high school level biology, knows that inbreeding produces problems. It's a very prob big problem, whether it be amongst stock animals or human beings. Inbreeding produces disease, mental illness, and other problems. Most people know that. Most sane people know that if you marry your sister, meaning if you have incest, you're probably going to produce a defective child. Now, in America, that unto itself is a, a phrase that would offend Hillary Clinton and all of the progressives. There can be no defective children. By definition, there is no such thing as a defective child. To the psychos on the left, everyone is equal. And, of course, we all know they're insane. But I'm talking about inbreeding. I'm talking about inbreeding in any society. Why am I talking about it now? Because you may not know this, that massive inbreeding within the Muslim culture has been going on for a very long time. In fact, for the last 1,400 years, primarily in the third world. And what are the consequences of intermarriage between first cousins? Well, intelligence, sanity, health, etc. Uh, are affected. Inbreeding. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? If you can't figure it out, then don't even listen to the rest of the conversation. Because I want to talk about this over the next few minutes or the next 30 minutes on the Savage Nation. Because studies show that children of what we call consanguinous marriages, consanguinous marriages, that's identical blood or close blood, have lower intelligence, lower IQ than children of non-related parents. We used to know about hybrid vigor. You know what hybrid vigor is? It's marrying out of your uh, close family associates. In other words, you don't marry a cousin, you marry a stranger. That's called hybrid vigor. That's why in America, people are so intelligent, which they generally are. It's because we're not marrying cousins. We're not marrying our sisters. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? People go out, they meet someone strange, different culture, different religion, different race, and they marry, and they usually produce a viable offspring that's more viable than either of the two partners. That's what hybrid vigor means in a human being or in, a, in another, in another uh, uh, situation. But the Muslim culture, according to studies, still practices inbreeding. In fact, in Pakistan, Pakistan, pay attention now, Pakistan, where the two lovely darling newlyweds just came from that slaughtered all those people in that place called San Bernardino, Hillary. San, say it, Hillary. San Bernardino. And then say Muslim. Then say slaughterers. Hillary, did you know there was a Muslim massacre just a week ago in San Bernardino, Hillary? Did you know that the murderers came from Pakistan? At least the woman did. And did you know that in Pakistan, Hillary, 70% that's a seven and a zero. A seven and a zero, Hillary. Seventy percent of all marriages are between first cousins, Hillary. I know they'll make excellent Democrats because they have low intelligence. They're half insane. Their health is suffering. What else could you ask for in a future America? A nation of... Well, you get the picture. I'll continue when I come back with more about what you are facing from psychotic progressives like Hillary Clinton with regard to immigration on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. Especially not, though, now, Frank, not amongst first cousins or sisters. Now, most of us know you don't marry a first cousin for good reason, because you 